Hello everyone, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the important components of our system, which are the CPU, the memory, and the GPU. Now you can think about the CPU as something that manages all of the heavy computational processes in your system. So things up like maybe installing large software projects, or maybe running some sort of a complex simulation or processing large amounts of data. All of that is essentially handled by our CPU. So you can see here that my CPU is about 10% utilization, but say that I was to maybe render some sort of a video or maybe convert a video from one format to another format, or maybe I have to install maybe an entire software package from scratch, then my CPU usage is gonna go to 100%. Now, the next component here is our memory or our RAM. Now, usually in, situ in situations where my RAM will hit 100% utilization is when we're running applications or tasks that require more memory. So say that you have way too many applications or browser tabs that you have open. Each browser tab really takes up some part of your memory. So maybe you have one browser tab that's running a video, another browser tab that's running um, maybe some sort of an online or, or, or large language model, or you're, you're playing some sort of an online game like poker or something. Uh, you might also have another application like a video editing software that's open, or you might have another virtual machine that's also open. Now, each of these things take up a little bit of your memory and all of these use your RAM. Eventually you get to a point where your memory is going to be about full usage or hundred percent usage. And when that happens, you're going to have to start you, you start noticing that your system is running really, really slow and it's going to get better once you start closing out all of the applications. Now, in the context of large language models, usually we like to run our large language models on the GPU. The GPU is much faster to do all of our computations. However, if you don't have the computational resources to run a large language model on the GPU, it would be run on the CPU. And when it's run on the CPU, the memory is the most important component. Because here I have about 31.7 gigs of memory. But if I was if I wanted to run a large language model, I need to make sure that my memory is enough to load that model. So that's a consideration that you need to take into account when you're looking at the Olama website and you're looking at all of these different models that you have available. Something that you have to consider is your computational resources, whether you can load these models in your memory. Now, ideally, we like to load all of these models on a GPU, but if you don't have a GPU available, we can always just load a model on our memory or our CPU. The only issue here is that it's a little bit slower to run a large language model on our CPU. So that's going to be the main difference. Now, the last thing that we have here is the, the GPU. Now, we like to load all of the large language models onto our GPU because this is where we can run all of our core inference. Now, when we run our large language model inference, the model is typically loaded into the GPU's dedicated memory. So right now I have about 24 gigs of dedicated GPU memory. And the reason why this is uh, really important is because again, if I have a large language model, say that a Llama or a Mistral model or something like that, and that model is something like seven gigs, then I need to make sure that I have seven gigs of dedicated GPU memory that's available to run my model. So we refer to this as our VRAM or our virtual RAM. And uh, the size of the GPU's VRAM really limits how large a model you can run for inference. So that's something that you'll have to take into consideration also when you're looking at the large language models. So let's, let's understand this with the use of an example. I'm gonna open up command prompt. And here I'm gonna look at Olama list to see all of the models that I have available. And we'll also over here, take a look at my GPU usage. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to run Olama run. And let's, let's take this model here. So when I run this operation, you'll see here that my dedicated GPU memory, now it's using 5.2 out of the 24 gigs of memory and say that I was to ask it to do something like write me an essay on the Roman Empire in 5,000 words. 
you can see here that my utilization is now starting to go up. My dedicated GPU memory is always this 5.2 because it's already loaded in all of the weights in my GPU. Now, once it's done writing the essay, the utilization then drops to about 10%, 5%. Let's exit out of this model and let's try to run the Mistral Nemo model. Now you can see here that this model is 7.1 uh, gigs of memory. So this is a much larger model. So take a look at what happens when I run this model to my dedicated GPU. So I'm gonna say Olama run Mistral Nemo. And now you can see that my dedicated GPU memory went up to 13.7 gigs out of 24 gigs of memory. So here, if I was to say, write me an essay on the Roman Empire in 5,000 words. Again, notice the utilization of my GPU. It's at 80% utilization. It's still using it while my essay is being written. And then once my essay is completely done, the utilization is then going to drop back to zero. And there we go. So it's not exactly zero, but it's close to zero as possible because I still have some other processes that, that are running. But basically this is how all of these components of your computer and your system are interact with the large language models. So to give you a little bit of a summary, the GPU is where we like to store and load our large language model. The size of the dedicated GPU memory helps us to determine how large of a model we can load. Uh, the memory is the second option that we like to use in case our GPU is not available. And again, how much memory that we have available impacts how large of a model that we can load. So that gives, well, uh, potentially help you understand what models you can use and what models you cannot use. There are ways around being able to load a really large model. Say that you wanted to lo load so something like a seven bill or a 60 bill parameter model, and you don't really have enough computational resources, then we can use or employ techniques like quantizations. But for now, all you need to know is how these components like the memory, the GPU and the CPU are related when it comes to large language models.